Hi everyone and welcome to Fusion 360 Monthly Challenge 2018. Joining the challenge is very easy. All you have to do is forward your full name, school or a company name together with your Fusion 360 email to Autodesk Community Philippines at gmail.com. Welcome everyone to our first monthly challenge for 2018. 2D sketching is very crucial in parametric part modeling creation. And all things in 3D normally starts out in a 2D sketch. Mastery of sketch constraints is very, very important. In this first part of Fusion 360 monthly challenge, we will focus on 2D creation. Let's get started then. First things first, we need to enter sketch mode. To do that, let's head up to sketch and select create sketch. At this moment, we are prompted to select a plane on which we are going to create our sketch. In this instance, initially, we are given three planes. So consider this as three papers for us to sketch on. In this moment, let's hover over our XY plane. In addition, notice as I hover over the planes, it highlights in white. So once more, let's hover over XY and left click. So now we are in the sketch mode. We can see our sketch palette and another indication you are in sketch mode. We have the stop sketch button here and our first feature on our timeline is sketch one let me grab our 2d reference notice that our dimensions are referring all on this point so notice 65 is pointing here same with 215 60 and 50. It's a good practice to place our x, y, z coordinates, meaning the three zeros, to be at this point as well. When we go back to sketching, we will be initially placing the first point of our line here, going up and giving it a value of 15. So heading back to Fusion 360, Let's head up to sketch and select a line. Let's now drop our first point. Let's left click on our 0, 0, 0 origin and move up. Notice we have a value highlighted in blue. So if this is highlighted, we can go ahead and key in the value so let's key in 15 i'm going to hit enter and same with our 2d drawing i prefer our dimension to be placed here as well so i'm going to hover over 15 left click and hold and move this one here our intent for this line is to be perfectly vertical Notice as I select this point, left click and hold, I am now altering the position and angle of this line. So this is not yet perfectly vertical. To make this line locked vertically, we need to head to constraints, scrolling down. In addition, notice that this point is currently selected. To deselect this point, I can simply left click anywhere on our canvas. So notice this gray items will now be active. So left click, head back to constraints, scroll down. Let's now select horizontal vertical. So this is now highlighted in blue, hovering over our line, and left click. I'm going to zoom in. Here we are given an indication that this line has a vertical constraint. So hitting escape to disable. 
Next, let's create another horizontal line from here, going to the left. And instead of heading up to our sketch drop down, so remember, the shortcut key for line is letter L, so hitting L. Line tool now active. Let's left click on our origin to place our first point. Left click here. Line tool still active. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel to zoom out. Moving to the left, so notice the values are steadily increasing. In this instance, instead of keying in a value, I will immediately left click and hit escape to disable line. Looking at our drawing, let's create another line hitting L. Drop our first point at this endpoint, left click, move to the left. So I will not input any value right now. Instead, I will left click, hit escape. So there's a small arc here, heading up to sketch. And let's select three point arc, zooming in, left click here and left click here, left click once more. Next, hitting L for line, Place our first point here, move up, left click once more, hit escape, head up to sketch, grab three point arc, left click here and left click here, left click once more to complete the arc, grab our line tool once more, left click here, move down, left click hit escape zoom in let's create another line hitting l let's drop our first point here and i will double left click so notice i'm still in the line command but we have created a line segment so hitting escape grab our arc once more heading up to sketch selecting three point arc Creating an arc from here, left click, left click, and left click, hitting escape, panning, grabbing our line once more, creating a line from here up to here, left click here, left click, hit escape, grab our three point arc. Left click here, left click, and left click, hitting escape. So no need to be exact right now. And finally, let's fill in this gap by grabbing our three-point arc once more. So notice, as I left click once more for the arc's final completion, the area enclosed turned into this yellowish color. If this happened, you have now created a profile. So hitting escape. Another thing to take note is notice during the creation of our arcs and lines, Fusion 360 automatically placed and inferred sketch constraints. Here we have perpendicular tangent horizontal vertical tangent moving forward let's refine the shape of our sketch let's focus here zooming in the required sketch constraint for this line and this arc is also tangent this is to make the transition between this line and this arc smooth so let's grab our tangent constraint Selecting this line and this arc, so notice it went into a smooth transition. So same with this line and this arc as well. So selecting this arc and this line, hitting escape. I'm going to zoom in. So once more, there should be a constraint here. 
grabbing tangent once more, selecting this horizontal line and this arc, zooming out. Next, the relationship between this line and this line should be parallel. So let's head to constraints, activating parallel, selecting this line and this line. Hitting escape, so notice as I hover over this constraint, you can see the other constraint symbol highlights as well. Zooming out, same here. We need to add two tangent constraints here. Grabbing tangent, selecting this line and this arc, this line and this arc. Zooming out. Next, this line and this horizontal line, both of them should be collinear with each other. So let's select collinear, selecting this line and this line. So notice the constraint symbol added. Hitting escape, let's zoom in. Another entity to be added with constraint is this two arcs. The relationship between them should be equal. So selecting equal, selecting this arc and this arc. So both of them has now the same radius. I'm going to zoom extents by double clicking our mouse wheel. So zooming out with our constraints. Now placed, we can now add dimensions. And before adding dimensions, notice that some of the items are in blue and some are black. Now the items in black are the ones who are fully constrained. So notice this line. As I select this endpoint, holding my left mouse button, I cannot move this point anymore. So that is a clear indication that the items in black are fully constrained. So let's move in here to this line. So left click and hold. I can move this item. Now our main goal here is to turn this sketch as being fully defined or fully constrained. Now, to fully define an item, you need to add a constraint or dimension or usually both of them in combination with each other. Let's now head back to our 2D reference and add the following dimensions. Let's start at our right going to the left. So let's head up to Sketch and select Sketch Dimension. Taking note, shortcut is letter D. Let's add the dimension from our center point up to this horizontal line. So selecting the center point and the horizontal line, left click. And left click here to place our dimension, the value to be 60. Hitting enter. Dimension tool still active. Let's select this arc, left click and left click here to place our dimension keying in. 20, hitting enter, hitting escape. So notice, as we add dimensions, our geometry adjusted to it as well. So I can zoom in here, and because this is not yet fully defined, I can move the points. I can select the center point and move this to the left. So let's zoom out. Hitting D for dimension. Let's select this center point and this vertical line. Left click here to place the dimension, keying in 65, hitting enter. Notice our entities are turning into black. Hitting escape, zooming in and hitting D once more, selecting this arc. The radius for this one is five so once I hit enter because the relationship between this arc and this arc is equal 
Then, as I hit enter, the radius of this arc as well is 5. So hitting escape and resizing. And in the instance, if nudging and resizing is cumbersome, we still have the option to delete this and re-add the entity. Let's head up to sketch once more, grab our three-point arc, re-add the arc here, grabbing equal once more, so making them both equal. Hitting escape, so here we need to re-add tangent, selecting tangent, selecting this line and this arc. Hitting escape, and hitting D once more, Let's add the radius for this arc. So this one to be 20. Hitting enter. Hitting escape. In this area, we have an irregularity. We need to add a specific sketch constraint here. So notice this arc. So this is its center point. And this point is the center point of this arc. Now, the relationship between these two arcs is their center points should be coincident with each other. In other words, they should be concentric. So let's head to concentric, selecting this arc and this arc. So notice both of their center points are now coincident. Hitting escape and hitting D for dimension let's select this line and this line so we are now adding a an angle keying in 135 hitting enter zooming out hitting escape let me position this dimension here and hitting D once more this time let's select this vertical line and this point left click let's drop our dimension here key in 200 next let's select this point and this horizontal line left click here key in 50 hitting escape so notice as i select entities by left clicking and forcing them to move so notice all of these items are immovable because they are now fully constrained. From here, we can now turn this 2D sketch into 3D. So let's extrude this. Selecting extrude. Prompted to select a profile. Selecting this profile. And one of the best practice when extruding, but of course it depends on your design intent, is to make things symmetrical so selecting symmetric under direction I'm going to pull this arrow giving this thickness so I'm going to key in 20 and finally hit OK my workflow for sketch creation I initially create a quick rough sketch with a base dimension as a reference Next, I quickly add constraints to form the sketch geometry. With constraints added, I move into defining the dimensions of the sketch geometry. Finally, I move items to determine what needs to be added. Is it a constraint or a dimension? Definitely, there's a lot of ways to create a 2D sketch and you will develop your own habit. Still, the ultimate goal is to have the sketch to be fully defined. Congratulations and see you in the next Fusion 360 monthly challenge.